Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you once again into the inner sanctum. Come in. Come in and meet our newest spirit. He'd been married for ten years and everything was going fine until one night at dinner his wife asked him to pass the knife, which he did, right through her. Then he hit her body in the town bell. That's where he made his mistake because the next morning she uh, told on him. <laughs> and now we can turn to a little matter of murder. Our story tonight begins on a pleasant note with a honeymoon couple. But don't start to squirm. The unpleasantness will commence soon enough. Let's look on at Joe and Nancy Stone, married hardly five hours and parked at the side of the road by the bank of the old mill stream and whispering sweet nothings to each other. Gee, Nancy, it's wonderful to be married. Yeah. The other clerks at Scott's department store can see us now. I don't want anybody to see us. I just want to be alone with you, Joe, for the rest of my life. I hope you don't mind spending our honeymoon in a tourist cabin instead of a swanky hotel. But I love it this way, Joe. The stream rushing past, the moonlight shining on the bridge. The woods all around us. Look, there's another car. They're parking on the bridge. <laughs> He's turning his headlights out, too. <laughs> they think they've got privacy. <laughs> I guess they can't see us, Barky. Look, Joe, that couple's getting out of the car. Yeah. For a walk on the bridge. Wonder if this is their wedding night, too. It's a gorgeous car. Joe. What? That couple, they're acting very strange. Huh? Well, they're having an argument. Joe. Look what he just took out of his pocket. Holy mackerel. A gun. He's pointing a gun at her. <laughs> he, he shot her. Holy mackerel. It can't be. It must be a gag of some kind. But you saw the flashes when he fired the gun. How still she lies. Her body crumpled at his feet. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's picking her up. I, I bet he's going to throw her into the Joe, don't let him. What now? Nancy, you push my hand down on the horn. He sees us. But he's starting across the bridge. Setting for us. He knows we witnessed the murder. He's got to kill us, too. Quick, start your car. He'll be here before I can turn the car around. Well, what are we going to do? We'll duck into the woods. Come on. Quick. Let's run. My high heel, I can't run fast. You've got to. Here, through these bushes. Get behind this tree. He's getting out of his car. He has the gun. Joey. He needs to kill us. He's coming straight for this tree. He knows we're here. Nancy, we've got to run for our lives. <laughs> Take my hand. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, faster, faster, faster. I'm tired, Joe. I can't go much further. We can't stop. He's close behind us. He's again here. Nobody's still after us. Let's stop and run. Oh, not yet. I saw headlights up ahead. Maybe there's a road if we can only make it. Joe... I'm through. I can't go anymore. Nancy, look. Through the tree is the road. Come on. One last sprint. <laughs> Here it is, Nancy. The road. I never thought we'd make it. Is he still after us coming through the woods? I don't know. We'll stop the first car that comes along. <laughs> oh, take it easy, baby. I was thinking of... That poor girl who's lying dead on the bridge. And on our wedding night, too. Here comes a car. I'll stop it. Hey! It isn't stopping. It went right by. Joe. What? I think I hear something behind us in the woods. It's only the wind in the trees. Suppose, suppose he should suddenly step out of those woods with his gun. Maybe he gave up. Maybe he went back to take care of that body. Our car is there, Joe. We 
with our marriage license in the glove compartment. And there's a seat Mrs. Swenson gave us for the cabin. Yeah, he'll know all about us, who we are, where to find us. And we don't know a thing about him except his face. The face of a murderer. Come on, Andy. I think we'd better start walking. We've got to get to the cabin and phone the police. <laughs> Much further, Joe. Just around the bend. I'd like to lie down and sleep. Right here on the road. Fine way to spend a wedding night. Darling, look. We're there. Swenson's cabin. Uh, they're all dark. Everybody's asleep. Now we'll have to wake up Mrs. Swenson use her phone. Joe. What? Look in front of our cabin. Huh? Hey, that's our car. The murderer must have driven here in it by another road to wait for us. I don't see anybody around. Maybe he's in the car. Wait here, I'll go and see. No, he'll kill you. Don't worry. We both saw his face. He's got to kill us both. If I go over there alone, he won't shoot till he knows where you are. Oh, now, now take it easy. Stay back here in the shadows. It'll be all right. <laughs> it's okay, Nancy. The car is empty. Maybe he's hiding somewhere close by. No, he must have skipped out. But why, why would he bring our car back here? He wanted to get it away from the bridge. Don't you see? He must have dumped that girl's body in the river, and then he took our car away. No trace. I'm scared, Joe. Maybe he's hiding inside the cabin waiting for us. He'd be a sap. One shot would wake up all the people in the other cabins, and Mrs. Swenson, too. He'd never get away with it. Come on. We're going in our cabin and get cleaned up. Then we'll use the phone. Switch is right here. Hey, see? Nobody hiding. <gasps> Holy mackerel! What, what is it? Oh, over there on the bed. What a... It, it's the girl's body. Just like we saw her on the bridge. Now we can return to that cozy little honeymoon cabin where Joe and Nancy found the beautiful corpse on their bed. The corpse who'd had her face lifted. But don't worry, before the night's over, the murderer may have his face lifted too. On the end of a rope. <laughs> now, if that murderer were an Oriental, he might try to save face, but you can't save your face if you lose your head, can you? Hmm? In the meantime... I wonder what Joe and Nancy are going to do with the uninvited corpse in their honeymoon cottage. Don't you? <laughs> now listen, Nancy, we have to think this over. We're in a jam. Oh, for the love of Pete, Nancy, this is no time to faint. It's almost... Face no, 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 no. Don't look at it. Not here. Uh, <laughs> What will we do, Joe? I don't know. I got to think. Oh, on a wedding night to have a thing like this happen. Why did he leave her here, Joe? To put us in a spot. The cops will never believe our story. Now they'll think we killed her. We... But, Joe, we never saw her before in our lives. Nancy, we've got to get rid of her. What? We've got to take her back, back to the bridge and dump her right back on the murderer. No. It's the only thing we can do. Suppose the cops come here and find her. They'll grill us for hours. They'll, they'll hold us for the inquest. It, it might take a week, two weeks. A fine way to spend a honeymoon in jail. I never thought of that. We've got to do it. We've got to take her back. But, but that means we have to lift her up and carry her. I'll carry her, but you, you'll have to help. I couldn't. You've got to. What must I do? You go out and get the back door of the car open, and then I'll bring her out. Joe! Joe, they'll find us here with the body. Quick, throw the blanket over her. I'll see who it is. I can't go near her. Oh, as I say, quick. I'll try. Give me a minute. Who, who, who is it? It's ours. This is Swenson. This blanket, it's too short. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Swenson. Her feet are sticking out. Get those clothes out of the valise. Throw them on top of her. That's the best I can do. All right, all right. Sit on the bed in front of her feet. Please hurry, Mrs. Stone. It's coming, Mrs. Swenson. 
Is everything okay, Nancy? Yes. I feel faint. Bite your lip. Do anything, but don't faint now. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Smith. Oh, good evening, Mr. Stone. I, I hope I'm not intruding. I saw your light, so I knew you weren't asleep yet. Uh, we, we were just going to sleep, weren't we, Nancy? Uh, yes. <laughs> I should have thought you'd be asleep long ago. Oh, you see, I, I brought you a jug of my own homemade apple cider. I'll put it right here. Some glasses, too. Oh, thank you, Mr. Swenson. <laughs> it's awfully nice of you. Oh, not at all. It's so nice to have a honeymoon couple. I wanted to do it earlier, but my heart was bothering me. I have a bad heart, you know. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Mrs. Swenson. Well, thank you for everything. Oh, aren't you going to try my cider? I thought you'd like to drink a toast. Well, we're not very thirsty right now, Mrs. Swenson. Are we, Nancy? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, of course not. Now, I'll run right along and leave you both strictly alone. Good night, Mrs. Swenson, and thank you again. Good night, Mrs. Swenson. Oh, you poor dear. You look all tuckered out sitting there on the bed. I bet you don't even know how to make up a bed. Here, I'll make it up for you. Oh, no. Oh, it's the least I can do. Now, you just sit over here on the chair, my dear. Please don't. Why? Well, she means, please don't bother. Oh, it's no bother at all. Oh, look at all these clothes all thrown around. What's this? We can explain everything. Shot. She's been shot. Murdered. Please, Mrs. Swenson, it's not what you say. Murdered. You, you're no honeymooners. You're murdering. Stop that. Let me go. Stop that. No. Stop it. I'll show you smelling in your hands. I'm just trying to stop her yelling. Please, Mrs. Swenson. <laughs> Joe, what happened? I don't know. She she just went limp and slid down on the floor. Mrs. Swenson. Mrs. Swenson, are, are you all right? Mrs. Swenson. What is it? She, she, she's dead. Joe, you killed her. You smothered her to death. I'm a murderer. Me. Joe Stone, a killer. We started out on a honeymoon, and now I'm... I'm a murderer. Joe! Uh, oh. Uh, I, I, I was kind of dizzy for a second. Joe, please. You look like a ghost. You're trembling. Nancy, what are we going to do? I, are you sure she's dead? Yeah, yeah, look at her face. She's dead. And that one on the bed. We're in a jam, Nancy. In a bad jam. Oh, Joe. I wish I were dead, too. Well, hold us for murder. But it was an accident. You didn't mean to kill Mrs. Swenson. Yeah, but how will we ever prove we didn't kill the other one, too? We'll never be able to find that guy with the black roadster. The cops will pin the rap on us. Joe, take me out of here. I can't stand it. Her on the bed. And Mrs. Swenson on the floor. Let's go away, please. Far away. You mean, run away? Anything, anything, but let's not stay here. I, I won't go to jail. I won't. Take me away. Please. Yeah, 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 we will get out. We'll keep going. Nobody knows our names. They can't trace us. Come on, get the clothes packed. Joe, I can't close this valise. Ah, close it. You get the other one packed. Now, don't forget anything. Look under the bed. Be sure we don't leave a single thing behind. No, no, mustn't leave anything behind. Everything's packed, Joe. Hurry. Hurry. All right, I'll take the bags. You put the lights out. Hey. What, Joe? What's wrong? I just thought. Our fingerprints all over the place. What do we do? We've got to wipe them off, off everything. Grab a towel. We'll wipe everything in sight. <laughs> Wiped everything, Joe, I think. The bedstead? Yes. The bathroom, the faucet? Yes. The doorknobs, the dresser? Yes, yes. The water pitcher? Yes. Yeah, and that's all. Let's go. Joe, the cider jug, we didn't wipe that. We didn't touch it. I'll wipe it anyway. Snap it up. All right. Come on, then. I'll feel better in the car, out in the road. <laughs> Joe, do you think we forgot anything? I don't know. I can't think. I'm numb all over. Darling. All in macro, Nancy. I'm a murderer. I'm a killer. Running away. We shouldn't have done it. We shouldn't have run away. Joe, it's not as if you killed her on purpose. It was an accident. Nancy, you realize you're married to a murderer. 
But it wasn't murder. So easy, so easy to kill. I never thought it could be so easy. All I did was hold my hand over her face. Please, Joe. What, what time is it? It's almost two o'clock. Oh, we've been driving for an hour. We've got a cigarette. I think, the, I think there's some in the glove compartment. I'll get them. Joe. What? Our marriage license, it's gone. Are, are you sure? It's gone. It was right here. The murder. He took it. But Why? Why would he take our marriage license? I don't know. I can't think straight anymore. He knows our names, everything about us. Joe, there's no use our running away. He knows who we are. We'll always be at his mercy. Oh, gosh. I feel all it. I, I, I can't drive anymore. I, I gotta rest. I, I gotta think. Pull up at the side of the road. Look, up ahead, a gas station close for the night. We can park there. Yeah, yeah. Sleep for a hundred years. Poor Joe. You put your head on my shoulder. Mm. The first night of our honeymoon. And maybe the last. Hey, it's daylight. Slept all through the night. I guess I fell asleep, too. It's cold. Yeah, we should have closed the windows. Gee, baby, you look pretty. Your hair must up. Joe. Gosh, your hands are cold. Here, let me warm. It was our first morning together, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, our first morning together. This isn't the way I used to dream about it. How did we ever get in a mess like this? We're back where we were last night in the same jam. Nothing's changed. Those two corpses still in the cabin. What do we do? Joe, let's not think about it for a while yet. Let's let's go find a place for breakfast. Our first breakfast together. After that, we'll go back to thinking about it. But at least let's have those few minutes. Sort of stay of execution. Yeah. Okay. There's a place, Joe, a diner. Yeah, but I haven't got much appetite. What we both need is something hot. Think there's an alarm out for us yet? Let's not think about it. Oh, the customers inside. Before tonight. Good morning. Early. You've been traveling all night? Yeah, yeah, all night. Ah, uh, some scrambled eggs, please. Right. It'll take a few minutes. It's all right. We'll wait. I'll turn the radio up for you. This is brought to you. This is your friendly neighborhood station with the early morning local news. During the night, death came to Mrs. Hannah Swenson, whose tourist cabins are located on the Bay Park Highway. Joe. Yeah, yeah. Right off it. Route 27. Mrs. Swenson's body was discovered by Oscar Jansen, the handyman, who was awakened by the sound of a car driving away from one of the cabins. Investigating, he found Mrs. Swenson lying on the floor of cabin three. Dr. Macklin, who was summoned immediately, noticed that Mrs. Swenson had died of a heart attack. A heart attack? He had been treating her for a severe heart ailment. Then I didn't kill her. Joey he didn't say anything he had not taken about more the other than a quarter of digitalis. The state police are anxious to contact a couple who occupied the cabin and who apparently left during the night. They are traveling in a blue Nash sedan, license number SN1637. Their names are not known as yet, but if they should hear this broadcast, they are requested to call at the state police barracks as soon as possible. Let's get out of here, Nancy. Say, what about your aunt? I can't wait. We're in a hurry. Come on, Nancy. What did it mean, Joe? Why didn't he mention the other body? It's a trap, Nancy. You get it. They're keeping mum about the girl's body. Joe, I don't think so. What, well, what else could it be? We left two bodies there, didn't we? We shut the motor off. 
Maybe the real murderer was waiting close by all the time. Maybe after we left, he, he went in and took the girl's body away again. I don't like it. I want to get away from here, far away. Wait, Joe. Don't you realize you're not a murderer? You didn't kill Mrs. Swenson. It was a heart attack. That's what they say. I say it's a trap. Now, let's get moving. Joe, it's too late. Look. Stay troop. He's coming right over here. Sure. He's got this license. No. Well, I guess our honeymoon is over. Well, are you Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Stone? Yes. You're Joe Stone? That's right. And you, lady, you're Nancy Stone? Yes. Well, then this belongs to you. What? What is it? Take it. Our marriage license. What? Where'd you get it? One of our men happened to be cruising down to the old mill stream last night. He saw a fellow get out of a roadster on the bridge carrying a girl's body. Well, the fellow dumped the girl over the rail and our man went after him. They had a gunfight and the fellow got a slug through the heart. When we went through his car, we found this. And on the back of it, you notice, he wrote your license number. It was like you figured, Nancy. The killer was waiting outside the cabin all the time. And after we left, he came back and took the girl's body away again. Then, officer, you, you got the murderer. Yeah, sure did. But we didn't recover the body of the girl. It was carried downstream. It may take several days to find it. But, then we're not wanted for anything? Well, you're the folks that were in Mrs. Swenson's cabin last night. We figured you left in a hurry. Kind of embarrassing to have a thing like that happen on your honeymoon, huh? I can't blame you. But then we're free to, to go on our honeymoon? Just come down to the barracks and sign a statement. Then you can be on your way. Uh, w w would you mind, officer, just a few minutes? We want to go back in the diner for our honeymoon breakfast. <laughs> You, didn't we? I'll bet you expected Joe and Nancy to come to a bad end. It's too bad Nancy had to be framed for murder, but we just couldn't resist framing her. She is as pretty as a picture. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Would you care to hear our recipe for eliminating crime? Well, it goes like this. To prevent a murder, you must commit the murderer before he commits the murder. Think that over for a while. And then you'll be ready to murder someone. Hmm? <laughs> well, friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time, when we'll be back with a little hunk of horror. <laughs> Sanctum has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>